everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. I feel like we need a, a, a tis the season type like holiday song when spring comes around, you know? I know. Like uh, Christmas has all the great songs, right? Holidays have all the great songs. Does Easter have a song? I don't know about that. But it's <laughs> it's spring organizing time. And man, that needs a song. It needs an animation, like a, a, a claymation special. Yeah. 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 Well, because it's an annual spring organizing yes. show. I can say it's annual because I looked at the the uh, last shows from last year. And the last time I did like a spring organizing show was almost exactly a year from today. So it really has become an annual thing. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's so just the way. So this is great because, you know, I love talking about this stuff. So <laughs> it's, you know. It's just yeah. a happy thing. It's a happy thing. <laughs> it's a happy thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very excited about that, uh, that, that we're, we're back to talk organizing. And, and mostly, Nikki, I mean, I know you have all these prepared notes, but because it is an annual thing, I'm very excited in hearing what is different this year uh, in your organizing strategy. I mean, things change, and I, I'm feeling a real sense of loss from some of our organizing strategies of last year. So I'm very excited to continue. Well, to and I had this. to review the notes from last year because I didn't <laughs> want to do the exact same show yeah, because that right. wouldn't really be fun for anyone to no. have the same show and ha- and say it's annual. <laughs> no, exactly. No, that's <laughs> no, that's not no. great. So I did switch it up, and and I'm only really <laughs> focusing on one piece of organizing. And so if people have um, questions or they want us to follow up more, you know, a- about what I'm talking about, then we can certainly do more organizing shows. It doesn't have to just be once a year. We're going to get started with the organizing in just a minute. But before we do that, head over to Take Control ADHD, get to know us a little bit better. Yes, if you don't know us well enough by now, you can listen to the show right there on the website, subscribe to our mailing list on the homepage and get an email with each and every new episode. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And holy cow, Patreon! It has been so much fun to see the Patreon group start to grow and thrive, and the posts in our new Facebook private group have been inspiring and delightful. If you want in, and you've been looking for a way to support the show and just couldn't figure out how to do it, now you can. You can sign up to uh, help us continue to grow and thrive at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. You'll get instructions to join the members-only group. You'll get access to the weekly live stream and so much more as we come up with it. <laughs> and we're, we what's so great it. is that we're continuing to come up with it and change things, and it's been just we really fun. We are a work in progress. We are a work in progress. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We are very transparent about yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> yes we are. Uh, Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Thank you, everybody. Okay, Nikki annual spring organizing show cue the the sounds of the birds i'm going to put birds and, in there and little storage containers <laughs> <laughs> i don't know Velcro why that came to and mind, like but... popping sounds like the yeah. sounds oh yeah but you know it's more than just storage containers oh, don't i ever you know don't that's i one ever of my pet peeves actually, storage containers don't go look, buy anything now look storage containers for me are the entrapment of organizing because I feel like they're luring me into doing things incorrectly in the wrong order. So well, we're yeah, because definitely you know what they should be that. called? What? Clutter boxes. Clutter bo- Look at you. I know. I just came up with that. <laughs> just right off the top of your head. Just on the top of my head. Look at right how fast now. that happens. I should trademark it. Oh, Nikki. Patent pending. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, they are. They're clutter boxes because they they usually aren't used for the intention that they're supposed to be used. Yeah. Well, okay. so let's let's dig in here. And as we said, we want to make sure that we're doing something that's, you know, different and new in our annual organizing show. You don't want to just repeat yourself over and over. So do you want to start off by talking about how your organizing journey has changed or do you want to do you want to get through some stuff first? You know, I don't know. I mean, we certainly let's talk about that because that's an interesting question. Has it changed? Has my organizing journey changed? I think that the concepts of what I've been um, teaching clients for years now um, is is the same. I mean, I think it is the same step by step process because I have made it 
very simple Mm -hmm. and I've tried to make it, um, not as overwhelming and have really like kept, you know, ADHD in mind. And so I think that the concepts have, have, have really stayed the same. Uh, what I think I'm learning more is not just the steps of organizing, but the emotional, um, the emotional piece of getting started. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the shame that has been filled with, um, you know, embarrassment and why can't I get this done and it never finishes. And why, you know, I heard somebody even just say this week, you know, why even bother? It's never worked before. Oh, that's just heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. And so that's the, probably the piece that I've been more aware of this year with working with clients and, um, for myself personally, I just keep reminding myself to start small and just do something, you know, and keep working on it. And because, you know, it's just, it's frustrating in my house too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's frustrating. yeah, for, for me, there are two pieces to that. The first is absolutely the emotional stuff. I mean, that yeah. that always comes back around. You know, that's a that's like on a planetary orbit. I'm always going to feel that way when I try something like this. But the mm-hmm. the thing that I I found myself really missing this year it was actually a New Year's thing, which you know we did the the 30 days of oh of you didn't do that this year. We okay. didn't. And Nikki, I'm not kidding. I I feel a hole in my life uh, because right. the, the clutter gets out of control and I have stuff that I need to move through my life. I need to move it on. I need it to, to find its way in the world. And I just didn't, I didn't do that effectively this year. And, uh, and I really miss it now when it's time for me to go in. I mean, my, I had a meticulously organized my closets right over there and it was meticulously organized, but over the year it has just blossomed. It is in bloom, mm-hmm. as I like to say. It's, it's in bloom. bloom. It's yes. fully ripe, and, and it's ready. It's ready to to clean. And so that, um, you know, when I when I find that absence of a practical thing that I did, an act that I took, uh, that yeah. that fosters the feeling of of just sort of shame uh, of that sort of cyclical shame. And so that is the first step for me is just finding a way to get get out from under that rock. And once I'm out from under that rock, I see hope again. Well, absolutely. And I think that you have a lot of hope because you know that what you did before did work. And so now you just have to go back to to something around that. You know, maybe you don't do exactly the same way as you did it a year and a half ago or whatever. But, um, you know, it worked, how important that was. And so, you know, do that now. Yeah, absolutely. Pretend it's January 1st. On May 1st, I challenge you to to work on that that closet. Yes. Get rid of some stuff. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm going to do it. Uh, There's a lot of hope, a lot of hope with organizing. Uh, And that's what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about kind of setting yourself up for success because that's what we want to do, right? We don't don't want to go out and buy a bunch of clutter boxes. No, no, no. Clutter boxes are bad. Yes. Um, And spring, you know, why is, why, why does spring organizing, spring cleaning? I don't really know why that is a thing. Um, Probably because the weather's getting nicer and, you know, I don't know. I didn't make that up. It's been Spring cleaning has been there for years. Well, yeah, you, you know can. Why? You Where know, did it come from? I actually don't know why, but my hunch is that it's just so much easier to. Uh, well, maybe. Oh, I wonder if it has to do with something like the cycles of farming, you know, of agriculture. Oh, that yeah, maybe. you know, yeah, when when mm-hmm. things change, you have to you have to clean out the. I, you know, I've got a buddy. I'm got next week. I'm going to be in Colorado on a bison ranch shooting a, a, a bison ranch, and they do. There are certain activities that happen around the ranch. Uh, around, you know, getting ready for harvesting and seeding and all kinds of things that they do that are specific to spring. And I I wonder if that has something to do with it. Totally off topic, because I could rat hole this for an hour. Uh, But that's what it feels like to me. And that's what it feels like here. You're finally to the point where you can open the windows and and sweep out the barn. Right. Right. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's spring. So anyway, what I want to do is um you know, first of all, acknowledge that organizing and ADHD are are two things that don't go together very well. Oh, high jump, low ceiling. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, let's acknowledge that you you have ADHD. So organizing is going to be difficult. It's going to be a hard thing. It's going to be overwhelming. Um, and, you know, you may question yourself on um, a lot of things because organizing is a lot of decision making. Right. We don't realize how much um, are, or how big of a role decision-making is in organizing until you start to do it. Um, 
and you know, getting started, all these executive functions that that are challenges for ADHD. You know, organizing is one of those executive functions. It's it's difficult, but living with clutter is also not a great thing. More difficult, right? It's also difficult. It's frustrating. It's stressful. Uh, you lose so much time, you know, looking for stuff that you can't find. Uh, today, it's so funny because I did a blog post not too long ago about the keys. Guess where I found the keys today? <laughs> I, I don't know. Let's just say, Pete, that my car keys, the ones that my husband and I share, oh, oh no. are really clean. Oh, no. Because they went through the washer. Oh, and the dryer. Do you have a key? Do you have a key fob? Did you soak your key fob? Does it work? What's a key fob? You know the little bu- the little buzzy thing, the buzzy thing but that unlocks the, the car? car. Yeah. Oh, I have no idea if those, it works or not. Those I keys are super smart. It. You should check it and see if your car still unlocks. It's probably broken. No, <laughs> because we washed. They're they're pretty resilient, but you do want to oh. make sure because you know. Yeah. Washing yeah. is is not a gentle thing on electronics. Well, no, and I generally I don't want to wash the, the I washed the remote control ones. <laughs> don't even ask. <laughs> I washed the remote control <laughs> and it broke. <laughs> it didn't work after that. Oh my goodness. So anyway, I, so we're totally off subject, but I just think that's funny because we I did a blog post about keys and I found my keys when I was doing laundry this morning. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> it is a battle that keeps going on and on. The perennial I fight. Can't, yeah, it, okay. it is. But I have a good sense of humor. Yes, you do. Uh, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, clutter is definitely not good for our mental health. It does, you know, going back to that shame and what it represents and embarrassment of not having, you know, not wanting people to come over to your home, all of that stuff kind of goes into this. And and it's important that we do something about it. Um, and so, you know, getting started, of course, is half the battle. This is something that we've talked about before. And if you do consider your ADHD, it do- it makes perfect sense. Organizing is boring. It's not a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's time consuming. It's overwhelming. There's all those decisions. You're not sure what to do. You know, that whole question again of it's never it never worked before. Why are we doing it now? I find that I one mean, in particular heartbreaking. Right. Because that's not is. just about sp- spring organizing. That's that's about, you know, Anything. everything. Yeah. 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 Well, and it was interesting because I um, that particular limiting belief is what I want to call it out mm-hmm. as. Um, came up recently with someone and we talked very um, in depth about what, what, why that was coming up every single time for her. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just about organizing her house. It was about a lot of things. And what is something else that, that what's a different belief that you could believe that could shift that mindset. And you know what she said? What she said? Tomorrow is a, tomorrow is a new day. Oh, now remember, What was it? Two weeks ago, right? Two or three weeks ago, uh, tomorrow is a new opportunity. Yeah. Two different people saying almost the exact same thing. So there's something there. People listen to that. You know. You know. I have to tell you, I had a thing. Uh, I I went to bed just the other night, and I was feeling totally frazzled, totally exhausted. You know, and and I was feeling that sense of overwhelm that comes with just looking at my task list and thinking, I'm a disaster. I'm a complete mess. I have people who are counting on me, and I'm not delivering in as timely a fashion as I should be. Uh, I have people who are not counting on me for for anything, and I still feel like I'm letting them down. Right. I mean, come on. Remember, who was it who said it was a a punk band who said, remember, son, it's always better to feel guilty for something you have done than something you haven't done. Uh, And uh, that was suddenly defining my life. I'm feeling guilty for stuff I haven't even done yet because my task list is so big. And I said I looked at my wife and I said, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to introduce peace back into my day. Tomorrow I'm going to introduce peace. Tomorrow I'm going to. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to stop. I'm going to intentionally meditate first thing in the morning. And uh, and I'm going to uh, do that so that I can move faster later. I'm going to introduce peace. And that has become a little mantra that I've been shaking around in the back of my head uh, for the last couple of days. And, you know, that that works for me. Uh, and yeah, and it, it puts a lovely. smile on my face. I need mm-hmm. more peace in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, that's great. 
Thank for, you for adding For what that. it's worth. For what it's worth. Yeah. Oh, I think it's worth a lot. I do. Because, the, and that's, you know, what we were saying at the beginning of the show. It's these, it's these emotions that are attached to these tasks that, that are the problem. It's not usually the tasks. Truly. So, you know, I think that that's, that's really important to, to consider. So I'm glad you shared that. Uh, so going on to the, to the organizing piece, one of the things that I always do before I teach a webinar, before I talk about organizing, um, with clients and, you know, on this podcast is to really define what organizing means. What does this mean to you? Because, um, if you are thinking that your house needs to look like the magazine cover that you're seeing at the grocery store, or it has to look like, um, you know, something that Peter Walsh has set up or some other, or, you know, professional organizer who's, you know, that's their expertise, you're probably not going to set yourself up for success. And that's, that's exactly what we don't want to do. We want to set you up for success. So you got to think about what does this mean to you? And, and, you know, over and over again, my definition has always been just to find what you need when you need it. And, um, but it's not about perfection. It's not about clutter boxes. I love mm-hmm. that. I'm going to say that oh, all the should, time now. You should take that and run with it. Mm-hmm. I am. I'm running with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clutter boxes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so really kind of decide, you know, what is good enough? What is good enough for you? Um, and what are you happy with? And, and this goes back to our tolerations, right? When we talked about tolerations long, long, long time ago. Um, I got a whole new oven. Whole new oven. Whole, yeah, yeah. Those who remember, I, that knob was a plague. Oh, that knob. That knob. Yeah. Is your light fixed in the hallway? Yes, the light is fixed. After seven years, we have a new chandelier in the hallway. Yeah, That's so tolerations. Nice. Yeah. Tolerations. tolerations. So that, that's what you got to have to, that's what you need to figure out <laughs> with say, organizing. That's a, that's, I'm sorry to give it, that's a deep cut on this podcast. I don't think we've ever had deep cuts on this podcast where deep we go, cut. we go back so far in our own institutional oh. memory that it's an inside joke. People listening today may not get. I'm, they probably have no idea. I'm, yeah. I'm very curious if, if that I'm one sorry. strikes a chord. I'm leaving yeah, it all if in. If you know <laughs> anything about Pete's <laughs> chandelier and stove, you'll have to write in and say, I remember that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> You're right. Okay. Well, maybe we should actually, that brings up a good point. Maybe we should define what toleration means because some people have listened to us that don't know what our tolerations were or what that even means. Right. right? Okay. I mean, Why don't you go yeah. first? <laughs> Let's talk about that. So right now I'm living a toleration. My house is a mess. It's dirty. It's, um, it, you know, it's just dirty. And so I, I have, I have come to my limit. And so after we're done today, well, and I have a couple of clients this afternoon. So after I'm done with work, I'm going to be cleaning some of my house, not all of it because I just don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm going to clean the pieces of it that really bother me because it is really at my limit of toleration. Like I can't stand it anymore. Um, And and you tend to run a a fairly tight ship around your plate. I mean, your your house generally stays pretty, pretty tight. Every time I come over to your house, it's it's that's because you're a guest and you're coming over. So I clean it. (laughs) Are you kidding me? If you were just to come over and be like, hey, I'm here, I'd be like, oh, bleep. Hang on. I got to come over. No, you're too far away. (laughs) Oh, no, it's dirty. It's dirty because I don't like cleaning the house. And obviously, my family doesn't like cleaning the house either because it doesn't get done. But I have more of a like my toleration isn't as wide as my family's. So. (laughs) <laughs> they they can they handle more than I can. Yeah. But it's the same thing with organization, just as cleaning, right? I mean, you get to a point where you just have to do something about it because you are wasting so much time, you can't find anything, there's clutter everywhere. I mean, there is a point unless you're like really a hoarder and that goes into like really more psychological issues. There, that you want to do something about. Yeah, right. Right. So right. that's that toleration of, okay, I just, I've had enough and I have to take care of it. Yeah. That's in that context. Right. I know that the the time that we talked about tolerations were the little things that 
aren't getting done that we should get done that don't take that long, but we keep ignoring them. And, well, and I, that was your stove. Yeah, I, I feel like that was my stove. It was a, the knob had broken and I, it had gotten months and months and months. I mean, years. I mean, we had this broken up and it turns out that things just kept falling apart on the oven. And finally it got to the point where we were at peak frustration and got a new stove. I'm living it right, right now with my yard. You know, we come into spring and suddenly out of nowhere, the grass still grows and it grows a lot when the rains come and then the sun yes. comes out. It's called photosynthesis. People look right. that up because it's a serious plague on yards. <laughs> and uh, it happens we everywhere. Need to, yes, we need to keep <laughs> that in check. Uh, and so I, I actually I mean, it's it's to the point where I need help. And that is becoming yeah. a toleration. And then I was driving down the street realizing, wow. I'm kind of alone. Our yard looks terrible. It looks uh -oh. so bad compared to our neighbors. We're going to get nasty notes. And and so uh, I, I finally made the call. I made the call yesterday. We got somebody came, looked at our yard. It's going to come help us uh, help us clean it up. And that feels really good. That's an enormous relief yeah. uh, to take that weight off. So um, absolutely. end the tolerations. Well and that's what happens when you, uh, you know, when you figure out kind of what you're okay with and you begin, you begin the process, yeah. then you're feeling better because it's that weight that's been taken off. You're not looking for perfection. You're not looking for a, 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 a clean, um, you know, room with nothing in it. I mean, we're, that's not what we're going for. Right. So I think it's kind of figuring out what how much of a mess is okay are piles okay with you um as long as you know, maybe know what's in them um or what's not okay so kind of trying to figure out what you're comfortable with well and how important this is to the ADHD brain because how easy it is for a piles and things like messy yards and things like dirty houses to yeah. to become you you become immune to it right you be, they right. become so invisible to you um yeah. And then the emotional roller coaster, when you actually do notice it, can just shoot off like a rocket, right? I mean, you're you just it, that you can get super depressed very, very fast when you haven't even seen what you need to be depressed about for a long period of time. And, yeah, and so yeah. that's just something to be aware of, that that it's OK to to practice that daily sort of mindful peace and forgiveness of yourself and your own Absolutely. shortcomings, that you perceived shortcomings, uh, to give yourself credit for the stuff that you do do so that when you discover the ugliness, you're ready. Right, right. Well, and I think that that's keeping your focus on what you are doing about it and not keeping your focus in the past, with, which is something you can't change anyway. So let's not focus on that and focus on, you know, I'm making a difference today. I'm making, you know, I'm, I'm making an opportunity for myself to take care of this today. And it, it is a process because depending on how much clutter you have in your home, it can take a long time. Yeah. And so it's not a fast process. So I think you're right. You got to be really forgiving um, for your, of yourself and, and keep focusing on, on moving forward and just knowing that you're not looking for perfection. You're not looking for everything to be labeled with those clutter boxes. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, it really is like take, Take, take the expectation down a bit and just figure out what is good enough for you. Um, and then I have just, so, you know, some general tips that I think uh, are so important, but we kind of forget about them. Um, and, and how can you be more efficient during the time that you're working? So, you know, when you are thinking of a project and you're, and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to get some stuff done this weekend. Work when you're feeling your best. And, uh, you know, if you're a morning person, then make sure you, you set up that time to, to work on your projects in the morning. Um, if you are really fatigued in the afternoon and your medicine starts to kind of wear off and you're not feeling great, don't expect that you're going to get much done during that time. Mm -hmm. um, so you really have to kind of figure out how you feel. Um, take your meds because it is important to stay, you know, it's going to help you stay focused on the project. Um, and you'll get more done in less time. And that's a good thing. That's that's a good feeling. Uh, it's also better to work in smaller increments of time um, and be more consistent um, than it is for you to think you're going to get it all done in one weekend. So, uh, again, if you're working on a project, work on it for 15, 20 minutes at a time and leave it. Uh, and you can document what you're doing or, you know, make sure that you kind of know where you left off. Um, but to try to think you're going to do something for four hours is pretty overwhelming. And most likely you're not going to get started at all. You're going to leave it because you're going to find something better to do. 
Yeah, well, and, and you should, right? You should just to keep your brain moving. You should yeah. you should set, you know, even if they, they feel arbitrary, even if you feel you're on a roll, it, it's okay to, to set yourself a break and walk around and get some fresh air and, and, and change that. And I, you know, I got to tell you, I've been noticing uh, myself lately. I'm in one of those slumps that comes every now and again. Maybe you've, maybe you've lived this too, you guys. Uh, but I'm in a task switching slump right now. Where oh, the transition time? Transitions are inordinately difficult for me right now. And and I don't know mm-hmm. what it is. I don't know why it, it sneaks up. Uh, I, I noticed you kind of winced a little bit when I said you could leave it. You kind of winced a little bit. Yeah, I'm wondering I mean, if a, that was sort of a subconscious, like, I'm sure. oh, it's a transition. I don't want to yeah. do that transition. <laughs> I, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. And it's even the, yeah. the, the transitions that should be like, you know, I need to get out of bed because mainly I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, right. You know, who are we kidding here? But uh, I don't even like doing that. Like, yeah. it, I really resonate against task switching right now. And this doesn't happen often for me. Uh, but, man, when it does, it's really hard. And so... In some ways, I feel like I need to set an alarm for everything I do. Mm -hmm. Um, And that includes taking the breaks, taking the breaks, Mm -hmm. taking the breaks. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted. Yeah. No, no, no. I think that that's a very valid point. So are you working through that now? I'm curious. Like, are the alarms helping you get through those transitions? Or yeah. What, what do you need to do to kind of get out of that slump a little bit? Well, you know, there's there's two parts to it. One is the is the fact that I have all these alarms and systems that go off and buzz and tell me to do new things at new times. And, you know, again, the, my, my daily agenda, which I set at four o'clock the day before, that helps me understand the first thing I need to do in the morning. Um, you know, over the last several days, I've been getting up and doing, uh, you know, some getting back to some exercises and, uh, you know, I got super sick and I just stopped going to the gym for several weeks. And, yeah. uh, that has, that plagues my brain, uh, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, started doing some, just, just slow down, sit on the couch. I turned on brain FM, uh, which, uh, was a, a recommendation from, um, you know, uh, our listener, John, we did the podcast mm-hmm. a, a little while ago or live stream a little while ago, um, that I'd forgotten about. And I've been using brain FM both while sleeping and in, in focusing and meditation. And I've been really enjoying it. Um, uh, so we're going to talk about that on the show in an upcoming digital episode. Um, and so awesome. those things are helping, but the, so yeah. practically I'm able to, I'm, I am able to do it, but what really hurts right now is how I feel about it. I'm really struggling right. with the emotional connection to task switching that I just hate doing it. And, um, it's tough to be, I'm, I'm having to use that language with other people I, you know task switching is hard for me right now please slow down and say what you just said again because i was not tracking it yeah right right so hmm. that's that well pete i hope you feel better soon well thank and you and able to get through that because that yeah that's got to be kind of frustrating well, it's, it's like a weight you know it's like carrying a boulder yeah. on your back you know it's, yeah. it's not and, and i'm you know i'm sure I'm, I'm not alone but it's one of those things that you can't no. see and it's right. just it's like fireworks go off in my head when new signals come in uh, and i'm not ready for it so you yeah. know i feel like uh the i feel like a catcher behind home plate right you know and you're mm-hmm. ready for the ball and then right as the pitcher throws the ball, somebody puts a bag over my head. So I know there's an incoming symbol or, or signal, That's, and but I, I mean, also know I'm yeah. about to get hit in the face by a fastball. Right, right. Yeah. You want to protect your yeah, face. Yeah, right, hmm. right. And so it uh, makes reaction time tough. And and so, yeah, yeah, those are, it's just, it's just the slump and, and it's fine. I know that the one thing I do know is that mm-hmm. it will pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good little affirmation to remember. This too shall pass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Well, I'm going to transition us back into I'm the organizing ready. conversation. I'm, not ready. I'm going back to bed. You're not ready. Are you okay? No, I'm okay. Let's are you do ready? it. Yeah, let's talk about okay. the organizing thing. <laughs> All right. Why are we, uh, I don't even remember why are we where even I here? left off. Well, I can I yeah. can tell you. You know, we're trying to trying to uh, talk about making sure we're successful. Well, that's right. That's right. So, okay. Organizing, again, is kind of boring. It's not really something you're going to probably look forward to doing. So something that will help is for you to figure out a way to make it more engaging. So that could be playing music. It could be listening to your favorite podcast. 
It could be uh, making some kind of game out of it. How many trash bags can I get rid of today? I mean, anything that will make you kind of a little bit more engaged in the process um, and make it a little bit more fun is definitely going to help. Um, getting your family members involved is going to help because they well, obviously the work is going to go faster if you've got more people. Um, and it actually sets a really good example Um to the younger people in your family, if they see that you're willing to let things go and um, be able to go through that process. So it's a good example. Um, and again, you get more work done um, in, a, in a quicker amount of time. The thing about organizing an ADHD that I think we often um, don't talk a lot about is it is very difficult to do on your own. Uh, so it, it is definitely recommended that you find a, a, an organizing partner, a buddy, somebody that can help you, somebody that you can help. Uh, maybe it's a friend, a family member. Um, you can certainly hire a professional, just make sure that they have ADHD experience. Um, but going alone, it, it's, it's hard, you know, you're going to probably get, um, a little stuck on some of the decisions. And if you have somebody there, as a body double, um, to help you stay focused, to help you stay on task, but also to help you go or walk through those harder decisions, um, and ask those harder questions and be able to process that out loud with someone, um, can make a big difference. And so, um, I, I definitely encourage people to, to find somebody that they can, um, work with. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So where to start, because that sometimes can also be, um, a challenging decision to make because every space feels important. Everything feels important. Well, it's interesting. Um, I mean, you said something earlier that you you feel like there are certain spaces that are causing you the most pain. Yeah, shouldn't that drive your decision to figure out you where bet. to start? You bet. Hallelujah. Absolutely. First question to ask yourself is what's driving you the you know what's driving you the most crazy? What's giving you the most pain? Um, what has the most impact on your home? So you know, kitchens, living rooms is, is that like an area that everybody is is um, congregating to? Then it's probably pretty cluttery. So that might be an area. Um, and I also think it's important to eliminate the areas that you know, yes, they're important and they bug you, but you just maybe don't have the time to do or they're too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so let's just do that later. For me, no big surprise. That's my garage right now. Like I can't, I, I just don't even want to go there yet because <laughs> I just know. don't. That's my garage. That's my oven knob. I can't believe we're it still totally talking is. about your garage. Oh, it's an ongoing battle for a lot of different reasons. You know, you could just sell your house. I mean, maybe that's the best strategy. Get a house without a garage. Well, right now we pretty much don't have a garage, so it probably <laughs> wouldn't really be we're that much pretty different. close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So for me, I know that's something I'm not going to deal with right now, but there's other areas that do pain me that I'm going to deal with. So that's what I would tell the listeners is just ask your, your, ask those questions, you know, um, what can you eliminate right away? What is the, the most, um, annoying thing? It's a, and, it is a uh, filtering mechanism though, because, you know, I can totally understand that, that feeling that, oh my goodness, everything is the worst thing. Yes, All of yeah, the things are the worst yeah. thing. So I, I feel like, it, you know, what you just did was really effective for, for me, which was this, this, okay, I know that there's a thing that causes me the worst pain, and, uh, uh, or I don't know that there's a thing that causes me the worst pain, but what are the other elements that go into making that decision? How can you narrow down your choices? So everything right. sucks. What's next? Well, maybe it's entrances and exits. Right. Maybe it's right. entrances and exits to the home that uh, I need to make sure are clean. Maybe it's um, everybody leaves their shoes by the front door and I need to put them in a basket or put them in a box uh, so that mm -hmm. the entrances are clean. Maybe that defines uh, what you how you need to start. So give yourself some freedom to ask the questions, uh, as you say, what hurts the most? what spaces are you know most impactful to the family or to traffic in my home what spaces are most impactful because i spend the most time there uh, mm -hmm. all of those things can help you narrow down when you feel like oh my god it's everything right right absolutely well and i have one more thing to add there yeah is to ask your or to ask yourself the question of what is a should question like should I like I feel like I should be doing this mm -hmm. versus really what's acceptable to you 
Right. Uh, because I think there's some pressure there of, well, I shouldn't have shoes in front of the doorway like that. I shouldn't do that. That's not acceptable to society. I don't, I mean, that sounds like, this sounds ridiculous when I say it out loud, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I mean, but you, but we feel that way. I mean, we feel like we should have a certain look in our house. And so I, I would ask you to, to think about, well, what's, what's good enough for you mm-hmm. and get rid of the shoulds. You know, anything that you're feeling like you should do and it's not something that you really want or care about, then yeah. don't do it. Right. Again, l- eliminate it. Eliminate the shoulds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, you can kind of, again, zero in on what you want to, where you want to start. I do recommend that you start small uh, in smaller areas um, just to get the momentum going and so that you also see your progress. And so maybe it's a drawer, maybe it's a small closet, maybe it's just a corner of a room or the floor or a counter space, right? I mean, we just want to start seeing progress. So I think it is a little less overwhelming. Uh, And it's one of the reasons why I'm not doing my garage that I don't even want to do a corner in my garage right now. It's too much. Um, But I can certainly work on my closet or, you know, some other area of the house. And I'm not even I'm not talking about organizing. I'm talking about just cleaning, too, basic cleaning. Um, Now, I did talk about this at the last annual organizing uh podcast okay so this is a recap recap yes because these are the steps that just don't change so the first thing you want to do when you start a space is you've got to purge and sort first before you do anything else Mm -hmm. and uh, i actually talked about this on my facebook live last week um because somebody had a question um One is they wanted to know the difference between purging and sorting. And one of the roadblocks that they were finding is they were going straight to organizing and decorating before they were finished purging. And it's interesting because I did a webinar not too long ago where that was one of the mistakes that so many of us make is that we skip that step or we we start that step and then we go straight to decorating and organizing. And the problem with that is you don't end up getting rid of everything that you would have normally gotten rid of. Well, I run into this thing where if I, yeah, if I have stuff that is kind of a decoration or a tchotchke, I'll continue to decorate with it. If it's there, if I move, if I change context too quickly and then I just end up keeping crap. Yeah. Well, and it's, 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 uh, Exactly. It's harder to organize when you have more stuff. Yeah. And so if you have less stuff, especially the stuff that you don't need, um, you know, it's going to make that step easier. So the difference between purging and sorting is you really are doing them at the same time. Purging is the decision making. So that is when you're deciding, do I keep this or do I let it go? So you're making the decision now that you've decided to keep it uh, sorting is a helpful step because you can put it into some kind of category. You can put it, you know, like this is going to be, you know, kitchen pots and pans. It's like using the same, you know, putting the same items together. Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of categorizing it to make it easier to organize. Um, But you do it together. I mean, you do those two things together to make it easier. And then the organizing piece is, okay, now that I know everything I'm keeping, I'm going to put this stuff back and, uh, and do the decorating or put it back into the drawers where it makes the most sense and all of that. Um, so that's just those steps to kind of keep in mind. Um, and then start with those easy decisions. You know, um, there's a lot of anxiety when it comes to decluttering. A lot of people feel that anxious, you know, pit in their stomach of, I don't know what to do. And so make those easy decisions first. If it's trash, put it in the trash, recycle, all of that. You have to know within seconds what you're going to do. Those are the easy decisions. Um, If you don't need it, love it or want it, you know, then get rid of it. The, the question, the things that you're not sure, keep it at this point, because this is your first sort. You're not going to only sort one time and never go back and look at your stuff again. Um, so if you really don't know, ease that anxiety by just keeping it. I can't remember the book, but it's that, um, it's the lady that the question is, does this bring you joy? Yeah. Wasn't it? Uh, that was Marie Kondo. Is that who it is? Yeah. yeah. So I've never read the book. Um, I've had some people 
tell me about it. Uh, but the one one thing that I've gotten out of it without reading it and just listening to people talk about it is, does this bring you joy? Yeah, right. I love that question. I mean, I think it's, you know, I, I don't think you need to, I'm not one to fold my shirts perfectly like she does, you know, and that's probably why I haven't read it is because. It's it's a higher, it, yeah. I mean, it, it, there's definitely a, there's, there's some good lessons around the emotional connection to our things, but there's yeah. also, it's, it's kind of heavyweight in terms of, you know, how you describe and care for your things as a relationship to your emotional connection to them. Like she loves her underwear and folds it properly every time she puts it away because she loves it. And as soon as she stops loving it, I I guess she throws away her underwear, moves it on to somebody else. (laughs) It's, it's, I found it a little bit oppressive in the, you have to love your stuff to keep your stuff thing. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. So I, I haven't, read it for that there's reason. definitely some good lessons in there I got too. Yeah, yeah definitely right. it's a different is a totally different take and and i don't want to discourage people from reading it um right. I, I personally had some challenges but i definitely you, yeah definitely got some yeah, lessons what you want and i definitely like the question do you you know does this bring you joy because i think that that does um cover a lot of the emotional piece mm-hmm. you know it, it, if it doesn't bring you joy then don't keep it um and and that's sort of been the question around our house. In fact, it just got brought up um, the other day from Paige, my daughter. She said, well, if it doesn't bring you joy, mom, you can get rid of it. I'm like, you're right. (laughs) You're absolutely right. (laughs) I know, right? Yeah. So um, definitely, you know, those easy decisions are going to make it um, a lot less overwhelming. Um, If you think that the easy... If you think what would be or should be an easy decision and it's becoming really hard, that's when you want to take a break. (laughs) Like that's when you know you're getting tired and uh, you need to take a break. Because I'll tell you, when you do these things, it's exhausting, not only physically, but definitely mentally. Um, And so like we mentioned earlier, you want to set that alarm, take a break, walk away from it, come back later. And those easy decisions will certainly, um, become easier for you. And, uh, but the key here is to come back. Hmm. So, um, you know, I, I always say if, if organizing your home or decluttering is the, the, the vision for you. That's, that's your project. Treat it like a journey, treat it, uh, like an ongoing project. And so if you do leave it over the weekend, when are you going to come back? So plan that out a little bit, you know, may, put it on your calendar, put it on your to-do list so you don't forget, um, whatever you need to do to just remember that this is important to you. This is something that hasn't been finished yet. Um, Remember what your good enough is, because if it really is good enough at that point, then let it go and not feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. Like it's cleaned up enough. Right. Great. Right. You know, Um, so that's that's kind of where I end that, because um, this will get you, I think, going, hopefully. Um, and and started on your projects for the spring. I love it. I love it's spring. it. It's inspirational. The grass is growing like a maniac. Yes. Uh, so yes. this is a great opportunity to jump back in. Uh, you know, we we always say this, right? We're not huge fans of things like, you know, New Year's resolutions. But you know, there's a reason that these things happen all around. Uh, a specific time. Use the energy of your community and and allow it to motivate you yeah. and to to get you to move forward through some things that you normally wouldn't want to tackle. It's okay. It's, it's okay, okay to do that. Yeah. Well, and I want to make sure that people know if you want to learn more about the organ, how what these steps are that I teach um, with organizing, uh, do definitely check out my online courses. I have uh, one on organizing your space your way. I have one that's called the paper solution, which is all about paper. Yay. Fun stuff. Um, and both of these are step-by-step programs that, that do help you organize your space, your paper. And, um, there's community boards within those programs too. So if you get stuck and you have a question, you can ask and we'll get back to you and, uh, it's good stuff. So it goes, goes into a lot more depth than what we did today, but I think today is a good starting point and that's what we got to do. We got to get started. Got to get started. Got to started. get started, people. Yes. Uh, this is a good way to do it. So thank you, uh, uh, and Nikki. Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to the show. We sure appreciate your time and your attention. On behalf of the good and kindly Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next time right here on Taking Control, the ADHD Podcast. <laughs>